Thank you very much. My name is Guillermo Scovazzi. I'm from the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department. I also have a secondary appointment in Mechanical Engineering. And uh, my presentation is going to be, uh, you know, with respect to others, uh, a little bit narrow in, uh, in, uh, in scope. Uh, I, I decided to start with uh, some, some motivation, but you will see that my, my line of work is in uh, simulation and computation. And so we try to address uh, uh, very fine detail uh, problems uh, with respect to, you know, uh, other issues in econo economics of energy and, and so forth. And at the end of the day, at the end of the studies, the, the hope is to provide some parameters that eventually, in terms of efficiency or performance or, of certain uh, designs, that eventually make their ways into uh, macro models. <coughs> macro models, more, more, more complicated models. Um, my presentation is about uh, uh, research uh, uh, in the area of fossil fuels. And as a simple motivation, I, I just said that, I'm just saying here that fossil fuels are here to stay in the short to medium term. And uh, uh, clearly, uh, if we look at the, uh, you know, the, the landscape of uh, where these energy reserves are, um, most of the conventional oil, the, the one that is uh, uh, more uh, easy to, the easier to, to extract, uh, are located in the Middle East and, and other regions uh, of the world. Uh, uh, while if you consider non-conventional oil, and particularly uh, heavy oil, which is uh, very uh, uh, viscous, very dense uh, oil that is not uh, that easy, uh, th they cannot be uh, um, uh, easily uh, extracted or oil sands. We have that we have large reserves in North America. So if we think about the also the um, uh, geopolitics and the energy security, definitely these non-conventional sources have uh, a very important impact on our economy. Now, there are many ideas to uh, try and extract uh, uh, oil and uh, non-conventional oil. And some of, some of the energy companies are actually trying to blend uh, this kind of uh, technology with uh, greener ideas such as uh, carbon sequestration. So this is a sketch of an installation in which you take CO2. It can come from uh, industrial processes. It can come from uh, the purification, the early purification processes that uh, take place in, uh, in oil wells. It can come from a system that capture the CO2 directly from the, from the atmosphere. And then you use the CO2 to wash away the oil and uh, uh, basically to, to sweep away the oil in the subsurface. Now, clearly, uh, you know, fossil fuels are uh, uh, creating a, an, an anthropogenic carbon trace in the atmosphere. This is a way to some, of, to some extent tame the tiger uh, in, in that sense. Now, um, the sketch is very simplistic because, uh, like, like this one, so you have the installation that uh, pumps in CO2 and uh, effectively uh, washes away the oil. Um, this is a simplistic uh, sketch because if you, if you start cutting slices uh, in the subsurface like this one, what you discover is that the interface is not as smooth as, as I uh, was sketching it over here, but it can uh, create a very complicated patterns uh, that are called uh, viscous fingers in this case. So this is like the cross section of the well, and this is uh, how these kind of patterns develop. And of course, the overall efficiency of the process depends on how fast these uh, structures are growing and uh, overall uh, developing in the, in, the, in the subsurface. So viscous fingers are uh, um, uh, um, basically can be dangerous for safety if they reach uh, uh, production wells. Uh, definitely, they are a limit of performance. So when, when you think about uh, a coefficient, uh, that a parameter that comes out of, of, a, of an analysis of performance of reservoirs, uh, this mic micro scale uh, phenomenon has a, has a dramatic importance. So we started working with Exxon uh, a while back, and now I'm uh, in the process of uh, renewing the contract with them from, from Duke. 
Um, and, and, and the idea here is that uh, if you look at uh, computational methods that are readily available in the industry, it could be the, the in-house uh, software uh, used at Exxon or um, Eclipse from Slamberger or, or many other tools uh, of, the, of the same kind, uh, these computational methods were not designed uh, really to do this uh, analysis of complicated instability patterns. And um, one of the typical uh, features of these uh, methods, I don't want to go in, into too much detail, but is that the, the current state of the practice in industry are methods that are highly sensitive to the orientation of the computational lattice that you use to simulate this kind of uh, uh, problem. So you have to imagine that there is this grid and uh, you will have a partial differential equation and the derivatives in the partial differential equations are evaluated by taking differences between points in this grid. And now, this is a computation in which all the parameters are the same with the exception of the orientation of the grid. We just tilted it by, tilted the lattice by 45 degrees, and you see a completely different result. So, if I ask you a simple question, which is, uh, how long does it take uh, for the interface between the CO2 uh, that you inject and the oil that you displace to reach a certain point in space over here, for example, you're going to give me two different answers, very different answers, depending on the bias of the computational grid. So we started developing with, with Exxon new technology to avoid this problem and, and to, to give more reliable results. I, I'm flashing here a, a, a slide about the equations that we solve. This is a um, uh, transient transport system in which the rate of change of the concentration of the various species in the, in the flow uh, are driven by a transport term that you see here, so that is the, the velocity that transports um, uh, various uh, components of the mixture. There is a diffusive term, and as usual in porous media flows, the velocity u is given by Darcy's uh, law that tells you that things are flowing from uh, according to the pressure gradient from, uh, from high pressures to low, towards low pressures, and gravity has an effect that is uh, the fluid follows uh, the effect of gravitational forces. Now, with the, with the new technology that, that we developed with Exxon, we, we basically opted for alternative methods, and I don't want to go into too much, too much details, but these are discontinuous Galorkian methods. These are finite element uh, methods if you are an expert in the field, um, and they are based on discontinuous approximation of the solution. So on every computational cell of the lattice, you are approximating the solution with uh, discontinuous uh, polynomials. And so if we go back to the motivation uh, that I showed you before, you know, these uh, highly um, biased uh, results, as you switch to the new technology, you see that the, difference, uh, the differences, if, if present, are are much smaller. And as we increase the order of the polynomials from linears to quadratics, uh, it is, this is a, these are parabolas, uh, you see that the bias is less and less. So this idea is to provide uh, engineers uh, at Exxon with um, methods that are reliable to tackle these, these problems. Uh, another uh, type of uh, application is uh, carbon sequestration. And this was a project funded by DOE in the past. And the idea here is the following. Um, we sequester carbon, but not to, to basically wash away oil. We just go into the, um, uh, we, we select uh, some very deep uh, aquifers that are so salty that we cannot use them for uh, drinking or uh, for uh, uh, irrigation purposes. And then by pumping down CO2, uh, the hope is that part of the CO2 will mineralize and, and will be locked in indefinitely in the subsurface. Now, there are some uh, issues uh, uh, associated with uh, the fact that the, the geology is not completely uh, known because nobody really cared about these uh, uh, formations uh, before. And there is also a, a chaos dynamics uh, issue in the sense that these uh, um, patterns that I showed you before, in this case driven by gravity, uh, occur. OK? 
Okay? So in this case, however, uh, it, these are beneficial because if you look at the overall uh, uh, CO2 flux that is sequestered from the water table surface, uh, you see that when this uh, instability occur, you have about a tenfold uh, increase uh, over long periods of time of the rate of uh, carbon sequestration. So this is uh, actually uh, a beneficial phenomenon. So when you look uh, at uh, you know, what these uh, kind of uh, patterns look like uh, you know, in action, um, you see basically that uh, if there are heterogeneities in the subsurface, and they usually uh, are, um, you have all sorts of very complicated patterns and phenomena that, that occur, recirculation. You, this is uh, clearly um, a flow that is dominated by buoyancy effects. And you also see here that depending, uh, let me just uh, uh, maybe move back, uh, repeat this uh, little movie you will see that uh, the frequency with which uh, uh, the, the oscillations take place is related also to the curvature. So because we have grids, uh, uh, and uh, I'm going to show them to you in, the, sorry, in these slides, because we have grids that can conform to the subsurface geometry and methods that are not biased by the orientation of the grid, uh, we, we have confidence that the phenomena that we see that are actually very little documented in the literature um, uh, are realistic and I mean are, are uh, 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 realistically uh, captured and part of the future work will be to, to try and analyze them from a physics uh, perspective and um, analyze for example what is the throughput of the system uh, as a function of the, the size and, and conformation of various um, uh, inhomogeneities. Now, going into uh, topics that are um, relevant uh, at the societal level and very controversial, uh, clearly, this is an installation for fracking, uh, clearly computational methods can help uh, to understand better this, uh, this phenomena in terms of safety and performance. And so, because the subsurface is inherently a very opaque uh, medium. It's very hard to do experiment already in the lab. It's very hard to characterize uh, over time uh, uh, how certain patterns are forming. And if you try to go in the field, you, you have very scattered uh, data at very, very few points. Uh, um, computation can kind of bridge the gap with, uh, between uh, uh, the scattered data and, uh, and um, the, the engineering intuition uh, and, and the, the engineering models. Um, these are problems in um, uh, coupling, that involve coupling between porous media and the rock matrix. And I have to say that here at, uh, in the civil engineering department, we're very fortunate to have a whole group of uh, people. We, we have Professor Dolbo here with us and, uh, and uh, Professor Aquino and a few others that are um, very complementary to the work that I'm doing here uh, in the sense that um, we, could, uh, we could definitely develop a whole program in, uh, in, uh, in, in this area of, uh, of research. Um, I want to acknowledge collaborators. I'm closing. Uh, maybe. Oh, yes, I still have a minute. So Axel was a former postdoc when I, I was a team leader at Sandia before coming to, to Duke. And Hao Wang is um, a research scientist at ExxonMobil, upstream research company with which uh, uh, I'm interacting, uh, and funding comes from Exxon and DOE. Thank you very much. <laughs>